Hey guys and gals, Vlad here with AVT Astro. And today, as always, I've got an interesting Astro topic for you guys. For those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little Astro blog called avt-astro.com. And of course, this YouTube channel. So if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. All right, and now let's get on to the topic of the video. As the title uh, might have implied, you know, today we're looking at the Coronado PST. And you're like, what's a Coronado and what it's a PST? Well, the PST stands for a Personal Solar Telescope. And as the, the handy advertising on the box will help me here, <laughs> you can look at the Sun and H Alpha. And basically, um, again, as the box will kind of help me here, this is what you could kind of expect to see, except uh, probably not as detailed as this. But basically, the main thing that the uh, PST allows you to do in H Alpha is really two things. You could see um, solar prominences, which is these guys kind of like flame essentially flying off of the sun, you know, is, is a good way to think about it. Um, and then the other thing, which they kind of don't really show here, I mean, there's a little one here, but sunspots as well. Uh, so that's really cool. All right, now having said that, let's go ahead and take this guy out of the box and we'll kind of look at the, um, and this is not a new unit, I just had the box for it and you know, I kind of wanted to use that as a prop essentially, because it kind of helped me explain some stuff. Uh, but basically, a cap fell out here. Uh, but basically, the PST, it's an all in one contained scope that's specifically made for observing the sun. So, you can't use this for the nice guy, you can't use this to look at your neighbors. Uh, it's, it's made just for the sun. Uh, 40 millimeter objective on this guy, um, it operates at f10, so it has a 400 um, millimeter focal length on it, um, which basically translates into a small scope that's fairly slow, and that kind of leads us to a disadvantage, which we'll kind of discuss later. Now, kind of talking about some of the other uh, features of this, it does has a, have a tunable, um, like H alpha band, basically, that allows you to kind of adjust, you know, like which part of the spectrum you're looking at to kind of bring out different aspects of the sun, like, you know, like the surface kind of gradation or the prominences. Um, so, and we'll kind of get a little, uh, a little bit into that more later. Uh, one thing that I really love about the PST, it does have a built-in finder scope. So when you're pointing this at the sun, there'll be a white dot that appears here and you can basically easily, you know, kind of find the sun. Love that feature. Love it, love it, love it. I'm very glad that they built that in. All right, so let's kind of turn this guy around. Um, on the bottom here, we have two uh, mounting points for a regular tripod, you know, a photo camera tripod will screw right into there. So that's really cool. Uh, you know, this thing, I forget what the weight is on these. Uh, feels like probably, you know, like three, four pounds. Um, I'll post it in the video. Uh, but anyway, Pretty lightweight, so any sturdy tripod should be able to support this. I mean, if you have any light duty uh, telescope, yeah, I will definitely work with this because this is about as small of a scope as you could get. Focusing mechanism on it here, I will kind of get into that. Uh, but overall, yeah, it's a gold, you know, tube. Um, built and finished on this, I mean, this thing feels solid. I mean, yeah, I have no, uh, you know, kind of gripes with the built and finish on these made in the US, love it, love it, love it. All right, so now I already kind of touched on, you know, kind of some of the stuff that the PST is designed for. How, how does it work, you know, like under the, you know, sky, like, you know, does it show you a pretty cool image or, you know, what's the deal with them? Well, so I kind of mentioned that the optics on this are pretty, pretty slow and it's a small aperture, right? If you're observing the sun at low powers to where you could see the entire disk of the sun, I mean, it'll look pretty small, right? We're talking about probably 50X or below. Mead's website, I checked our Coronado's website, it says up to 80X is what this thing will do. It will, but I mean, that'll give you a really dim image. So I'd say it's 50X or below. If you're observing at that, it does give you a relatively bright image. You know, typically when I'm observing with this thing, it's like, like 25X, you know, you can see the whole sun. You will see a lot of these, you know, especially the brighter, bigger prominences. So that is really cool. If you've never seen that before through a telescope, trust me, it's really impressive. The first time you see it, you're like, whoa. The other thing that's really cool, you know, while I'm on the prominence, um, 
subject that what's really cool about these i mean they don't change like it's not like a movie to where you're watching this things you know evolving you know like every second or anything like that but these things do change pretty quick i mean you could like spend 15 minutes observing one right and you'll see changes in its shape i mean the, the, it's very rare in astronomy to see anything happen in like basically an action within like let's say an hour and with prominences you could definitely see that the sun does rotate pretty quickly too so if there's sunspots on there which will be the it's kind of a small one shows that maybe i'll post in a picture of a better sunspot but basically it'll look like a dark you know area on the sun you will see those kind of moving across the uh surface as well so that's really cool too um so can you see like these graniations and stuff like that if you bump up the power you know under ideal conditions you, you will be able to see some of it it's not going to be as sharp as this i mean this is a photo that's been digitally enhanced so it won't be as detailed as this and i mean the image scale that you're going to have is not nearly this big either um but it is possible all right so next you know i already kind of talked about the finder it's super cool i love it um, so this uh, does have an inch and a quarter focus, so you can use any like, like inch and a quarter eyepieces. They do make a line um, that are specific for the scope. Um, I've honestly never tried them. I don't know if they're that much better. I think they have like some kind of different coatings on them. They might be a, a hair better. Um, it does not have a compression ring or anything like that. The set screw on this is uh, nylon though, so it shouldn't mar your eyepieces or anything like that. So I do like how they thought about that if you care about that type of thing. Um, this tuning mechanism, I've never had any issues with. I mean, it's not like incredibly smooth or anything, but it works, you know, works well enough. Uh, focus here, that's kind of like my, you know, like, I guess only gripe with the scope besides the small aperture and kind of the dimmer images at higher power. Um, I mean, it's serviceable, it does work. But, um, you know, this knob, I think they should have just made it bigger just from the factor. I don't know why they made it so small. I mean, they should have at least filled out the space to the edge there. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to stick, you know, past that, but they should have filled that on. It would be, you know, a lot more precise to kind of focus it. But typically, it's not bad. For visual use, works really well. And this is primarily a visual scope. I mean, you can attach a camera here and, you know, do uh, some photography with it. Uh, considering the small image scale, though, I think this is kind of more of a visual scope. All right, so what, what are some of the use case scenarios that, you know, I see for this little guy? Uh, to me, personally, um, I mean, this thing is made to be, this is like the cheapest, pretty much H-alpha scope that's, you know, an all-in-one package that you could buy. I think these retail right now for around 800 bucks at the making of the video. Um, I mean, as your first H alpha scope, if you're just kind of curious about it, I think it's really cool. It's a good option. It will definitely get your feet wet. And you can see some pretty cool stuff. So it's it's not like super entry level. I mean, you can see most of what there is to be seen, you know, even like if you upgraded. It's just that with the bigger scopes, you can use higher power and they are better for photography. But um, as your first H alpha scope is great for that. Um, you know, some of the other, you know, besides you just, you know, kind of looking at the sun, some of the other things that I really like about having one of these guys around, um, if you go to star parties, you know, and it's a multiple night star party to where you have to spend the day there, you know, some of my longest days of my life have been, you know, spending the day at the star party waiting for night to, for the next night to arrive. This gives you at least something to do, like at the sun, you know, that way if there's other people wandering around, you know, the chances are going to gravitate towards you and, you know, you've got company over and that type of deal. Helps you pass the time faster. The other thing that I like about this, you know, like most of my friends, right, that are not, you know, members of my astronomy club, they're not into astronomy at all. They could care less about astronomy. A lot of times they're not over in the evening or anything like that towards late enough to show them stuff through the telescope. I mean, sometimes, you know, those work out that way. Uh, but this gives me a good way to introduce people that are not into astronomy into something astronomical. And, you know, the first time people see the sun, I could almost guarantee it's going to be their first time seeing the sun, period, through any type of scope. But especially if you show it to them in H-alpha, I mean, you could just see that their mind's blown like the first time they see a prominence or something like that. So it's really cool. I do really like that aspect of this thing as well. All right, so anyway, hopefully you guys found this, uh, you know, kind of mini quick review helpful of this thing. I mean, again, you know, this is like the entry level uh, H-alpha scope, you know, the most entry one that you could get. 
Not a bad unit though. I, I would say unless you're like really deep into each alpha and that's kind of really your thing, you probably will want to upgrade from that. I think for the average guy that just wants to look at the sun every so often, I mean, I think this is really all you need. Personally, I guess I didn't talk about it. I do have a, a Daystar Quark. I've mentioned this in other videos before to where I could do H alpha on any refractor. So, I mean, I viewed the sun um, in refractors up to 130 millimeters. Yes, having that extra image scale is nice. The thing is, you know, one thing that I will say with H alpha, even if you have a really cool scope, I mean, I've used my Quark with the best five inch Apple that's ever been made, Astrophysics 130 GT. And, um, you know, the scene most of the time doesn't allow you to go like above 50, 60, you know, definitely not about 100, not above 100 X during the day. Because, you know, it is, uh, you know, warm, obviously, usually if the sun's out. Uh, so, yeah, so just because you have a really cool, big, you know, solar scope that costs like five grand, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be able to use it most of the time. Towards this, you could take it out any day of the week and, you know, you could use this up to 50x easily. So I'll show you most of what there is to be seen on most days on a really low budget. So anyway, hopefully you guys found this review helpful. If you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, leave them in the thing below. If you're not subscribed, again, do please do consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.